Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website worldwide, ranked number one in the world by Alexa as it relates to quote unquote traditional Catholicism. And today I have a very special guest. Some of you may be already um, aware of his work, uh, but to kind of set a backdrop for this talk today, I have with me Dave Dionisi, and he is a former United States military intelligence officer and corporate executive. Uh, he's also the founder and president of Teach Peace Foundation, an organization working to educate people in the United States and around the world on the New World Order, specifically the dangers uh, that this secretive cartel pose to the planet. Now, I would say that David and I have share some commonalities. You know, we both kind of left the world. He's no longer in the business world as I am not. I actually finished with a master's degree in business, used to run some very successful large business units across uh, the, the United States, specifically down in the Southeast. But now we both educate and expose. So we share a commonality there. And obviously our love for Our Lady, the Rosary, and the Church, hopefully we'll get a little bit into that and how Our Lady ultimately uh, is the answer for these times. But I'm going to start this talk off by handing it off to David and allowing him to get a little bit more maybe into his background, where he's coming from, uh, general research in general. Specifically, we want to talk about atomic bomb secrets, the secret of Nagasaki, and defeating the Brotherhood of Death. And I'm sure we're just going to get into a whole bunch of other topics as we usually do here on Tradcat Night. But David, I'll hand it over to you. Wherever you want to start, I'll work off you, sir. Okay, well, thank you for that uh, very generous introduction. Um, I'm a volunteer, and basically what happened was, it was like most everyone, you know, working and um, caring for my family. I have, I have four uh, young children, and I define myself as a, a Catholic who, um, when I'm confused about something, I look to what the official teaching of the Catholic Church is, and I follow that. I found that uh, throughout my life, every time I thought maybe... I understood something differently and I, I researched it more. I, I found a, a great appreciation for the church fathers and, and what they taught. And so, um, you know, if I ever say anything in an interview like this that's inconsistent with the teaching of the Catholic Church, I'll be the first to say I made a mistake. Um, so having said that, I felt called by the Holy Spirit uh, over a decade ago now to work on exposing the fact that Satan was very organized and using secret societies to attack the Catholic Church. And, and that led me down a series of paths that were rather fascinating. One of them was to work on what really happened in Japan. And the result of, of that project alone has been mind-boggling. You know, I'm now sitting on, uh, on the edge of waiting for one of the most powerful people in Japan to issue his clarifying statement. Um, for those of you that have never heard about this before, um, the real reason the atomic bombs were used are very, very different than, than the reasons that we've been told. And uh, the letter that I have written to the Archbishop of Nagasaki, uh, Archbishop Takami, is available for people to read on the Teach Peace site. If you just go to the home page near the bottom, you can click on a link and, and read it. Uh, and maybe it makes sense, it's not very long, maybe it makes sense just to give people that letter here so that uh, yeah, you know, they can understand. I'll provide that link in the description box along with your website, along with a general link to Amazon for all of your books and your website. So every, it'll be right in front of, of everyone. Well, I would suggest maybe I should read, read it because it's sure. just so powerful. And um, it starts off with, Dear Most Reverend Joseph uh, Takami, Archbishop of Nagasaki, uh, your, excellently, your Excellency, it was one year ago today that you wrote to me to wait for your clarifying statement. So this letter is dated September 14, 2016, so it's a little more than one year now. But re returning to the letter, it says, The atomic bomb truth helps people see the beauty of the Catholic Church. When you inform people that the evidence now exists to prove that Nagasaki's Catholics were intentionally targeted, the greatest single persecution of Catholics in the history of the world. I am confident the result will be an increase in the number of Catholics, not only in Nagasaki, but around the world. As you know, our faith has always greatly expanded from the blood of the martyrs when the truth has been made known. 
With the Armenian Genocide, the faithful had to wait 100 years before the truth was confirmed by Pope Francis. At the Mass for the Faithful of the Armenian Rite on April 12, 2015, Pope Francis said, Concealing or denying evil is like, a wound, is like allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it. In his greeting at the beginning of the celebration, he also said, It is necessary and indeed a duty to honor their memory. For whenever memory fades, it means that evil allows wounds to fester. Um, I'll, I'll just jump ahead a little bit in the letter. For people who want more, it'll, it'll be available. But basically what this letter is saying is that I'm waiting for the archbishop who has already had the, uh, uh, the publishing company in his diocese, which is St. Mary's Press, which was founded by St. Maximilian Kolbe. They've already published the book in Japanese, uh, the Atomic Bomb Secrets book. The top historian in his diocese, uh, who leads the 26 Martyrs Museum, Father Renzo De Luca has already endorsed the book, and he wrote, I encourage these works as they help everyone to clarify many facts that we need to know in order to make a healthy and courageous judgment about history and mankind. And perhaps the most well-known uh, Nagasaki bomb survivor uh, in his parish, in his diocese at uh, Yurikami Cathedral, has also given a very powerful endorsement for the book. Um, so we're at a point where I'm, I'm asking him to summarize, basically, and clarify three things. That Pope Leo XIII, in his April 20, 1884 encyclical, warned that secret societies, with Freemasonry being the largest, were seeking the destruction of the Catholic Church. The second point is the atomic bomb was used 61 years after Pope Leo XIII's warning, not because it was absolutely needed to end World War II, but because the atomic destruction was essential to prevent Catholicism from filling the spiritual void created when Emperor Hirohito announced his divinity. And three, President Truman, Vice President Wallace, General Hap Arnold, General Curtis LeMay, and other top leaders, including former President Roosevelt, were Freemasons. The Atomic Bomb, Se the Atomic Bomb Secrets book <clears throat> explains with carefully documented sources that people in the service of secret societies identified by Pope Leo XIII are responsible for detonating the atomic bomb over the center of Christianity in Japan. And I would encourage people to take a real serious look at that. There's a free documentary. You can watch the whole thing. It's called The Secret of Nagasaki, based on the, on the book. You can find it on YouTube or from the Teach Peace website. And you will see one of the most powerful examples in concrete that there is a secret war against the Catholic Church. Yeah, without question. That's one of the things, obviously, we cover here at Tradcat Night. But a follow-up question to that, David, is what's, what is the uh, feedback we're getting uh, with this particular video now i think uh, the video secrets of nagasaki has something like ten thousand uh, views which is uh quite good uh but in general you know what are people saying in response to the overall information that you present because i'm sh i'm sure like uh what i have to deal with we're, we're being called uh you know conspiratorial types you know nut jobs tinfoil hat wearing type of people you know what are you saying to the naysayers who are labeling us that and maybe tie it in with your experience uh in the military in the corporate world i'm sure it had to be hard um you know kind of moving through those elements and, and maybe speaking on these topics well the the atomic bomb subject is very unpopular in the united states so if people go to youtube um they're going to see actually there's there's not that many ratings um it's been viewed uh, positively 108 times with the thumbs up and, and negatively two times out of that total 9,000 plus. And um, I think if people make the time to watch the documentary, they're going to be pleased. That's why it's got the 108 to 2 ratio. But um, in general, when you bring up the subject that those bombs were used unnecessarily, you know, that's not a real popular thing here in the United States. You know, I come from a military background and, you know, that was... One of the things we were taught was, you know, look at the, 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 we ended the war, we brought freedom to the world, what a great thing. But when you find out that the Battle of Okinawa, the bloodiest battle of the Pacific, was completely preventable, and that battle, you know, basically occurred because they were delaying to make sure the bomb was ready so they could test the bomb, and that Japan wanted to surrender on the exact same terms that they, that they did surrender on after the bomb was used, it, it just starts to change things dramatically. And that's why... It's so important for people to watch that documentary. You know, this is not about making money. People have accused me for, you know, wanting to sell books. I've been a volunteer. 100% of the proceeds have gone to the Teach Peace Foundation from day one. If you want to read the book, 
You can go online and go to atomicbombsecrets.com and read it for free. If you want to watch a documentary, same thing. But the, the point is, um, for me, what happened in my journey is I saw something that I did not really understand. I mean, I saw that not only did the Catholic Church get attacked, that people in the Catholic Church were working to suppress this truth. For a lot of, lot of reasons, sometimes very good people, very faithful Catholics, they just thought it would be somehow in the service of, of, of God for the truth to not be known. And then that opened me up to this, to this other calling from God to expose different dimensions. That's why I wrote one book about the financial dimension. That's why I wrote one book showing how they have a spiritual dimension. You know, the enemy that we face, um, Father Kramer wrote about it in his book called The Mystery of Iniquity. And it's, it's interesting. I'll mention this book. Uh, because someone who read my book said, oh, you should um, meet Father Kramer because you and I, you and the two of you have written almost identical books. And I had never even heard about his book when I first got that comment. And then I read his book and they are very different, actually, if you read the two, but they're saying the same thing. You know, that he's using different supporting evidence for his, his conclusions. And, um, but at the end of the day, they are saying that, that there is a group. It's this what we call mystery of iniquity. It goes back a long, long time, oh, yeah. and um, it's working to create tremendous confusion in the world so that souls will go to hell instead of souls going to heaven. And that's why you'll see, I, at the end of the day, I just beg people, play, pray the Holy Rosary, learn about Fatima, um, don't be deceived. That's, that's Satan is going to tremendous efforts to make sure people do not understand what Our Lady of Fatima really, really told us. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get to that in a little bit, the Akita fatima connection. I know you have another great video on that. Obviously, we cover that extensively here at Tradcat Night, the real third secret, the actual words of Our Lady being concealed for obvious reasons uh, because it ties in with what's about to happen. Well, what's been happening since Vatican II, but then ultimately what is about to happen. Let's talk a little bit, before we get into the, the whole 9-11 topic, uh, which is another uh, topic that you cover, uh, Christopher Boylan, another traditional Catholic, covers this topic as well. Talk a little bit about false flag operations in general, if you can, how it kind of ties in with this emerging New World Order police state. And then we can get into the whole 9-11 mainstream narrative. And really behind it all, it truly was an occult ritual, was it not, David? Absolutely. Yeah, you actually just... Uh gave the one-liners for three books I wrote. I'll just mention, I wrote a book called Preventing American Hiroshima. It's um, book two in the five-part Vigilant Christian series. And that book documents all the false flag operations that the United States has conducted, okay? And when I say the United States, it's really this Brotherhood of Death cartel using the United States as, as its military might. And I'll, I'll have to fill in the background of why that happened. The, the Brotherhood of Death Cartel is the accurate name for, for the enemy that we face. But the second book you touched on is the third book in the series, and it's called The Occult Religion of the 9-11 Attackers. And it shows in concrete what the religious belief system is of the mystery of, an, uh, of iniquity religion and how it applies to what happened on September 11th. And why September 11th was, first and foremost, a spiritual ritual to help bring in dark, dark powers into the world. I realize how crazy that sounds to people. Just bear with me. The third, uh, the, the third book that you mentioned um, that I wrote about um, is really on how you know this this group is is out there. If you open your eyes, you can see it. There's different ways. Like I, because I had an intelligence background, I could see their influence in the intelligence organizations. Uh, then I went into the world of finance. I could see their influence in the in the financial organizations. To the point where nowadays, you know, what I was writing about years ago, people dismissed. I was taking my kids to school this morning, and uh, actually I, was, I went there ahead of them, and I was on the radio listening, and I, and I heard they were talking about the New World Order, just a mainstream, you know, they, they made a comment about Donald Trump taking on the, the Federal Reserve, and that was the closest to anyone bringing up, you know, the, the real New World Order power, the power hidden behind the scenes. And this was not some kind of, you know, low budget uh, thing. This was a major, you know, a radio a broadcasting uh, entity. So, I, I mean, I think the terms now, is there a new world order? I think that's that's now become mainstream. People recognize that there is and that the Federal Reserve is privately owned and that, you know, a lot of things that are happening in terms of military conflicts are not happening for the benefit of our country, which 
you know, I mean, it means our soldiers are being put in harm's way unnecessarily. Now, as it relates to this Brotherhood of Death, we're, we're here with Dave Dionisi, and this is going to be an overwhelming talk, maybe for some of you hearing it for the first time, but I encourage you all to get to his YouTube channel, watch some of his videos, get to my YouTube channel, and start spending time. Uh, stop watching, you know, football every night. I mean, you got to start investigating these things, folks. I just did a blog today covering these things, how most people do not want to peel back that onion because it makes your eyes tear, but you got to start pulling back the layers of this mystery of iniquity. Do you see any connection in your research between the brotherhood of death and the pedophilia that we're seeing, whether it's coming from the Vatican, the local dioceses, uh, you know, the world governments, any kind of connection that, you, you know, direct connection that, that you see? There is a 100% direct connection and the documentation for it uh, begins with two, two documents that were personally verified by uh, popes some time ago, but it's true. You go take a look at the Italian document, the Alta Vendetta, and it, it outlines the plan of the Freemasons to infiltrate the Catholic Church, and once they infiltrate, to engage in a number of scandals that would eventually um, be suppressed by them so that the, the bomb could continue to, you know, the cancer could continue to grow. And at the right time when the cancer had grown enough to cause many people to leave the faith to expose it. And that's exactly what happened with the pedophile. And now I'll tell you, Eric, this is, this is amazing how God has put me in different places. So, so my own um, life experience, I, I, I could see what was happening. I, I founded a Catholic orphanage in, in West Africa, and it's called Franciscan Works. And um, that organization, it's in Liberia, Africa. You know, people, if you want to support kids that are in great need, just go to franciscanworks.org. But my, my point here is that because of my leadership role in that organization, uh, when we had a child that had been abused, I was the person that was asked to do the investigation. And I did the investigation, I came back, I, I gave the findings to the Catholic Church officials, and I was asked to stay quiet on the sideline, that they would take care of everything. And when I thought, um, this is back in 2009, I thought, okay, you know, the big guns are going to come in from Rome and they're going to really do the right thing and they're going to hold people accountable. And what I learned was that um, this effort to conceal the truth, uh, it, it's very real. And what happened in the United States is happening right now in Central America and South America. And, and this is been incredibly powerful for Satan and his, his secret societies because in my own life, I know of many members of my family uh, and friends that have left the Catholic Church uh, because of this issue. Uh, I, I'm originally from the Massachusetts area, so when the whole Boston child abuse scandal blew up, um, you know, we, we had over 60 parishes, it was, that had to, had to be closed down. A very, very sad thing. But see, the key thing is what people, when they, when they understand the, the secret war against Christ and his people, this is why in Hosea 4, 6, God calls us to be you know, wise as serpent and as gentle as doves and that we're destroyed for lack of information. We're supposed to dedicate one day of the week, you know, the Lord's day, to really learn so that we're not deceived. That's why it's such an important uh, commandment for us to, to invest the time to know what's going on, because if we don't, our souls will be lost. So here's the thing. It's because the Catholic Church is essential for your salvation that Satan is going to do everything in his power to get people to leave the Catholic Church. Yeah. So when you see something like the pedophile thing happen, or you see a, a priest or somebody in a leadership position, um, or, or even a pope do something completely opposite to what the Church has done for 2,000 years, that's your time not to leave the Church, but to say, Hold firm to what the true church has always taught. And that's why we're promoting at the Teach Peace Foundation, the number one thing we're promoting this year is that the five, five first Saturday devotion. And we have a brochure. It's available free. If anybody wants it, they can get it online. And what it does is it says, if our, our, you know, we have a promise from God. Our Lady has communicated that if we're being very, very uh, dedicated to the sins against her immaculate heart, and, and we are, each, each of the first Fridays, if we are going to confession, 
you know, in a state of grace, if we're saying the Holy Rosary, um, if we are doing a meditation, you know, for, for the sins against her, um, and we have Holy Communion, do that five Saturdays in a row. In this brochure, you'll see it helps you because there's a little checklist. You can keep track of everything. Um, you you can save yourself from having to spend time in, in purgatory. You know, you this is a this is a path where Our Lady will come to you at the moment of your death to help you have eternal eternal life with God. And this is a way for us to help our loved ones and other people, so that you know we can we can bring people to heaven. And there's nothing more important that we're doing at the Teach Peace Foundation, and we're doing some really important things than than promoting the, the first five Saturdays. Amen to that. And uh, yeah, there's no question the enemy is using the church, the Catholic Church, the True Church, as a front uh, to, let's say get across their ultimate agenda so i would argue as father martin did we're we're en route to the formalized new age religion not quite there yet as state of a suggests in my opinion there's no question we're moving in that direction but ultimately folks that does not mean the church has been defeated and we still have a lot to go through the great storm hasn't even hit yet in all honesty and so we got to bear down as david said and it's time now as soldiers to stand firm it's not time to leave our lord by quitting the Catholic faith. Now, a follow-up question to, uh, you know, the overall rise in false flags. We're seeing them virtually on a, a daily basis, David. You know, it's ISIS in Minnesota. It's these attacks in New Jersey, New York City, this or that. Ultimately, it seems that the New World Order is trying to take away our freedoms, uh, implement more of a police state. You'll notice after these, quote-unquote, uh, you know, attacks, some of them, you know, might, might as well be false flags or even hoaxes. I don't know. Uh, but the bottom line is there's more troops on the ground, so to speak. Um here's a question for you what can we do to prevent another 9-11 i've had a few others who have had uh government insider information you could say and they say it's on record that there are not one or two 9-11 type of events coming but a half a dozen over the course of a two-week period in order to just totally fear monger uh the public into submitting to world government how i mean is it unrealistic to think that there's anything we can do or what what can we do uh, well, there are things that we can do, and I, I would want to come back to this Prevent 9-11, because uh, I think there's something you and I agree on, and that is that Christ's church will never be defeated. We know from Scripture that um, that that the true church will withstand the, all attempts from Satan, and, 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 and that while we're seeing very troubling things happen, absolutely uh, there is there's a core group that just never yields. At the same time, Jesus does say that if God does not step in at some point, yeah. the deception would be so great that essentially the entire world would be deceived. And that's why when I look at something, I say to myself, well, I'm in the entire world. What am I deceived about? And I'll tell you for a fact, I have definitely been deceived in the past about things. But uh, one thing that has always guided me is to be loving and patient and kind and say, I don't know and I don't know, and um, and default on the side of, of love. And and I've never regretted doing that. And so <clears throat> when we come to preventing another 9-11, my, my fourth book is, is on 9-11, The Secret War, and it explains that 9-11, with concrete evidence, it shows it was planned going back to 1980. These are not operations that are, you know, at, at, I should say 1980, at least 1980 that I have the evidence for, okay? So um, these are operations that are planned many, many years in advance. And there's a whole bunch of them that are planned. You know, they have, if this set of variables occurs, we're gonna go with this plan, if this, another. And for a lot of people, their first realization that this stuff was all real came with operations uh, Northwoods back right after 9, uh, right, actually it was released right before 9-11. And that was a document that was from the 1960s that had been kept classified, but was, decla was declassified right before 9-11 because they knew it had the potential to be very explosive should there ever be any real 9-11 commission investigation. Uh, the, as you know, there was a 9-11 commission, but it was never really a real investigation. Right. And they thought they would just defeat that whole issue just by releasing it to the public a little bit in advance of 9-11. But um, they definitely have the next... 9-11 plan because they have a they have a religion and in their religion what they're trying to do is welcome the antichrist 
And there's certain things that they believe they need to do, and human mass human sacrifice for them is essential to help bring in this new Antichrist. And so there's no question about that. And, and we're fighting a spiritual battle more than we are a physical battle or a military battle or anything else like that. So that means the number one superpower in the world, it's not China or the U.S. or something like that, the number one superpower in the world is the power of prayer. And the number one prayer people can be pay, praying at this time is the Holy Rosary. Um, the Blessed Virgin told us that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by prayer of the Holy Rosary. And so what I would say to people is pray the rosary every day. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you a story. I used to be one of those Catholics that thought the rosary was something just old people did, okay? And, and I'm, I'm ashamed to say this. I went to Catholic high school. I ran an organization for the disabled in, uh, in Liberia. You know, as a volunteer, I ran this organization um, for an, an area uh, for people at the Our Lady of Fatima Rehab Center. I did not pray the rosary. What happened was in 2014, we had the Ebola emergency in Liberia. And at that time, okay, the people all around us were dying from Ebola. We're talking east, west, north, and south. If you ever look at a map of where most of the casualties occurred, uh, you look at the Monrovia, Liberia area, that was ground zero, okay? So we're praying the rosary, and that rosary is not only keeping us safe, but it's keeping the village that adopted us. We were adopted by, the, by a tribe in the, in the village of Black Tom. Okay? It kept every one of those people. So some of those people had huts that were just, you know, stones throw away from some other huts where people were in villages that were dying. It was really an amazing thing. And, and because of that, I, I came home and I said, I have got to understand what is going on with the rosary. So we, we had all of our kids were praying the rosary and they had been doing that for a while. They were actually doing that as part of their normal, um, you know, education. And, I, and, and I, I said, oh my gosh, you know, how incredibly ignorant I am about, um, about Fatima. And I read a book, everybody should read this book. Um, I read a book called Defeat, uh, the, the Devil's Final Battle by uh, Father Kramer and some other priests. So it's The Devil's Final Battle. You can get it on Amazon, I think, for just a couple pennies. But it's one of the best books you'll ever read. And it talks about how the Fatima story, how, how the Fatima truth has been suppressed by people who have infiltrated the church, okay? The people who are secretly Freemasons that have infiltrated the church. And uh, what happened to me is I felt called by God at that point to go to Japan and find out the real story of Our Lady of Akita. And that took me on a journey that uh, I, I just thank God so much for that gift. And, and for people who are interested in that, you can see the, the documentary, uh, Akita and the Fatima Secret. Yeah, definitely talk about that a little bit. That's one of the areas I, I, I wanted to get into. I'll, I'll come back to the culture of death here in a second. But yeah, the Akita Fatima connection, obviously, uh, Akita, you know, it, it equates to Fatima, just as it equates to really Our Lady of La Salette. All three of those really work hand in hand, dealing with uh, apostasy, confusion in the church, uh, ultimately uh, bringing about this Luciferian uh, New Age. But maybe talk a little bit more about uh, this connection. Uh, again, Father Martin talks about this often. One, one of the bishops that we follow, Bishop Williamson, every talk that I hear of him, he's always reiterating the Akita message. And then specifically, you know, a chastisement coming from above, which to me, I've covered this before. Uh, maybe some of you haven't heard this, but Planet X, which is incoming. Uh, we actually just got some breaking news last night. Australia was just hit by a pretty significant uh, meteor that actually caused a 4.0 earthquake. Uh, so I would say pay attention to the skies uh, in, in the not too distant future. But yeah, talk talk a little bit about that, Dave, the, the Akita Oops. Fatima connection. Okay, so to explain Akita, I'll loop back quickly and I'll define the Brotherhood of Death because a lot of people may be confused. We've heard the term the New World Order. Other people call it the powers that be. Other people call it the Eastern Establishment. Some people call it the International Banking Cartel. Um, some people refer to Freemasonry. You know, think of an octopus with many tentacles, and Freemasonry is a tentacle, okay? Um, they actually have institutions like NATO is a tentacle. The United Nations is a tentacle. Um, as you move closer to the head part, though, it's, it's more of an elite structure. So you start to get to Skull and Bones and Club of Rome and organizations like that that are, that are definitely part of, part of this um, 
Brotherhood of Death. Well, the real name for the octopus, and, and TV, they make fun of it and stuff, right? You see all kinds of TV shows that have this concept. They'll call it Hydra in, 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 a, in a TV show like the Marvel or whatever. But, but the, the real name is the Brotherhood of Death, okay? And they go to links to make sure people don't know this real name. So I'll give you an example. If you take a look at Skull and Bones, that's the official name for a secret society at Yale University. And that secret society was created, if you go back, it's very easy to track it back. It goes back to the Illuminati in Europe. Well, the the brother, the, the Skull and Bones secret society, which you know George H.W. Bush and John Kerry and many others have, have gone through, um, this society, if you go back 150 years, they were called, officially, they were known as the Brotherhood of Death. And the reason why is, in their initiation ceremony, to become a brother, you had to go into a coffin, and you had to go through a ritual where you died. Any, any baptism, any allegiance that you had made to Jesus Christ had to be renounced, and you had to make a new allegiance to your new master, which is Lucifer or Satan, same person, just a just different way of getting there. So, so that's why if you ever pull up footage on YouTube or whatever, of a, you'll see ABC did a report years ago where they showed it, uh, someone snuck in and they filmed some of the Skull and Bones initiation. It shows the young men going into, you know, they picked 15 young men back then at, at a time and they would go into this coffin and they do these very, very, very terrible things. Well, because the Brotherhood of Death obviously has problems in a culture that should be a culture for life, they had to have variations of it. If you go to um, Hitler, for instance, is another example. Hitler was actually brought to power, this is in my third book, by the Brotherhood of Death. He ended up breaking away from them starting in 1934. But if you ever look at the SS officers on the top of their helmet, you're going to see the Brotherhood of Death symbol, which is very often, it's the exact same symbol of skull and bones. It's the skull with the bones. So you look at an SS, SS officer's hat or helmet, you're going to see they have the skull and bones. And the SS officers refer to themselves as brothers in death. There are many examples of like, th like this uh, throughout history. So um, the point is, while it is fair and absolutely accurate to look at historical examples going back more than a thousand years to say the name was the Brotherhood of the Snake or the Brotherhood of the Serpent or the Brotherhood of Death, those are all fair at different societies and at different times. It, it, it's because Satan gets exposed that he has to change the name periodically and, and use all these different tentacles. And, and so the most accurate name, when you look at everything at the highest level, so I'll give you an example, in, Palladium, in uh, Freemasonry, the highest level in Freemasonry is the Palladium level, okay? But once you become a Palladium level officer, you then report to a brotherhood of death. So you are, you are direct line alignment with the Brotherhood of Death. Again, that's all documented. I wrote a book called Vigilant Christian One, The New World Order. And in that book, it exposes the secrets that the elite Freemasons um, learn about after their 15-year probationary period, should they be you know, elevated to that, to that point where they're going to be fully indoctrin indoctrinated in the Luciferian doctrine. Um, so, okay, that's the Brotherhood of Death. It's actually a real name for this real group serving Satan. So when you think of the international banking cartel, that's real. That's part of it. When you think of other organizations like the Bilderbergs, that, that's real. That's part of it. But they are all serving Satan and his, his plan for a new world religion, a new, a new world under, under his rule. Um, so now I'm going to jump back to Akita. So I went to Akita fairly innocent. You know, I was a little um, knowledgeable about praying the rosary because of my experiences and reading some books and talking to some people. And thank God for the Fatima Center. I think they have phenomenal resources. I was so motivated by their work. I reached out to them to see if I could help them in some way. And one of the things I found that was interesting, Eric, is a lot of times we're, we, we as uh, good people – are too afraid the other person's not really who they say they are, you know, that they're coming with some kind of hidden agenda. So I was offering them to give them the documentary and do all kinds of stuff. And in retrospect, I guess I scared them because they just thought, no, no one would really spend this kind of money and do these kinds of things and just give it to us, flat out give it to us. But that was the offer. Anyway, so I, when I went to um, uh, Akita, 
I was surprised by high-ranking people in the Catholic Church who were trying to prevent me from meeting Sister Sister. Um, uh, in, in the story in Akita, just to backtrack a, a, a little bit, um, there is a sister named Sister Agnes Sasagawa, okay? And you would normally think that you could want to meet anybody, you go meet them. But there are actually people in the Catholic Church that are being kept in hiding, and Sister Agnes Sasagawa is one of them, okay? So I knew it was going to be a little bit difficult to find her. They tell her she's being kept in hiding for her own personal protections because she is a bona fide recipient of a message from the Blessed Virgin. When I say that, I'm giving you the official Catholic Church teaching. You'll go on the internet, you're going to hear all kinds of nonsense that Akita was never approved. The truth is the Catholic Church delegates approval to the local bishop, and unless that is officially renounced you know, by a higher authority, you know, officially repudiated, that local bishop's authentication stands. So in 1984, Bishop John Ito, he authenticated the miracles in Akita, okay? And and there's been all kinds of rumors and nonsense that they uh, that they, they haven't been, that, that they've been renounced. They, they, they've never been renounced. The, the official position is a church-approved miracle. And the way Satan and his forces, by the way, do this so powerfully is they'll say, oh, well, the Pope hasn't, hasn't issued a document authenticating the bishop's authentication. That's true. But that doesn't mean that the bishop's authentication has been renounced. It's very, very sneaky the way this goes on. Well, anyway, so after multiple folks were kind of frustrating my efforts to find her, uh, I went up to Akita, and the guy that uh, works with me, a wonderful man, he, he did the translation for the Atomic Bomb Secrets, which uh, at, at about that time was just getting ready to be published. This is in 2015. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll notice this. This sun subject of the, the Time Bond Secrets was so hot that two publishers in two different cities published the book at the same time, both in July 2015. One was a Tokyo publisher, and the other one was the Nagasaki St. Mary's Press publisher. And and, uh, and and so we were kind of more focused on that, but at the same time, really felt called by the Holy Spirit to really find her and get to the truth and, you know. So he's with me, and everyone at the at the convent in Akita, all the other sisters and everything, they're just mums the word. No, nobody's talking about anything. All the literature there has her has Sister Sasagawa's name scrubbed. Um, the only thing I could find anywhere was one document, say referring to a Sister S as being the recipient of some special messages from from the Virgin Mary. So no one's talking to us. We're we we we've traveled a long way. I mean, we've spent you know a lot of money. Going up to Akita when you're down in Nagasaki is not the easiest thing. It's on the opposite side of the country. And uh, so we're, we're, we're thinking, okay, what more can we do? So I just feel called. I'm walking in the Garden of Mary at the, at the mission. And I feel called to go walk over to this area, kind of through the woods. And there's a group of women there. And I walk up to this one woman who's a nun, and this is the absolute truth. My, my translator almost fell off his feet when this happened. And I said to her, I've been called to God to speak with Sister Agnes Sasagawa. Can you help me find her? And she said, I am the nun who takes care of her. And I happen to be visiting here today to, you know, to pray with my friends here. She says, I will call her immediately. And that set off a whole sequence of events where I ended up meeting with Sister Sasagawa and finding out that she's being kept in hiding. She wants the world to know the information that's in that documentary. And she's wanted the world to know that information in that documentary, according to her, this is an exact quote, for a, a translated, of course, for a very, very long time. Okay? So um, I worked with her and her assistant to make sure every word was exactly what they wanted. We went back and forth, changed anything that they felt could be more accurate, that kind of thing, and um, had her blessing, went back to the United States. At that point, the Fatima Center had a conference in Washington, D.C., which was interesting because it was the same day that Pope Francis was uh, giving a talk on Capitol Hill, you know, that same time. Yeah. And I, I said to them, so I think, um, well, this is September, September of 2015. I, the exact date I'd have to check. I think it might have been the 22nd or 23rd. But the point is, I, I said to the Fatima Center, here you guys go. It's a gift. Sister Agnes, you know, and, and she wants the world to know. Teach Peace Foundation is fairly small. I'm not sure how many people will see it if we put it out there. If you guys put it out there, you can help a lot of people. 
And by the way, if you want to make any changes, feel free to make any changes as long as she approves them. You know, that's all I ask. Anyways, I think Satan got in the mix and scared people, and that never got off the ground. And so it, it, the free offer got rejected, went nowhere. I ended up uploading the video on YouTube just so people can see it. Interesting enough, it was like, I mean, it was going gangbusters. It got like the first 50,000 views on YouTube in, uh, in just no time at all. It was, it was maybe three months or something. You know, for me, that was like, wow, just look at that. I, I check and every week was going up. Yeah. Some cases, one, 3,000 a week, da, 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 da. But in the last few months, it's been nothing. I mean, I, it's, you know, maybe 100 people see it a week or something. But the point is, it's more important to see that now than ever because we're coming to an end of the 100-year period of time. If you remember, on October 13, 2017, yeah. the, the Blessed Virgin, the dancing of the sun miracle, that began the clock of 100 years of Satan's extraordinary power. Well, that's coming to an end. And what... What we know from historical precedents with the French, Re French Revolution and everything, that suggests very highly that a lot of things that have been prophesized are going to start to happen after 2017. That's why I personally would not be surprised if we saw the Pope not live beyond the period of time going into 2019. I mean, we're just all kinds of uh, amazing things that are that are prophesied is that that would happen. And I would say for everyone, pray for the Pope, pray for, pray for everyone and, 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 and uh, be awake because what we can do is through our prayer, we can either have a period of peace come about or we can witness a, a period of chastisements worse than, than, than the flood of Noah. Yeah, I definitely want to get into that. I've uh, pointed to the fact, and I agree with you 100%, 2017 is your key date. I've, I've been on record as saying, you know, 1917, Our Lady came, warned, and that period uh, of warning is essentially over. Uh, in terms of the fire, uh, you, you know, the actual chastisement where it talks about, you know, a punishment greater than a deluge, such as one has never been seen before, fire will fall from the sky. You know, there's been some of us who debate, well, could it be, you know, Planet X kicking in these meteorites? But I say pay attention to the sun. Because a lot of people are highly concerned in the scientific field of a large CME uh, coming from the sun, which actually would tie in with revelations. I think it's well, off the top of my head. I can't recall. Maybe it's 8-7. But a fire coming down and burning a third of the sun. What's also a correlation is Our Lady came to warn again in Italy. Blessed Sister Aiello said the same thing, that a fire would come, uh, come down uh, from the sun, essentially, and burn a third of the wor uh, world. And... Russia was specifically mentioned, so maybe that's kind of the kickstart to get Russia ultimately moving uh, in the direction that it needs to move into. Uh, but yeah, there's just so much. The, the, the Akita Fatima connection is just, it's there, folks. And, and La Salette, too, I would put in there. I, I wanted to add to this talk, too. Again, we're talking about a lot of things which make people uncomfortable. We fly by the Eagle's Creed here, okay? The eagle is the only bird that once the storm comes, it spreads its wings in faith and hope, and it goes right into the storm, folks. It doesn't cower. It doesn't give in to despair, worry, doubt, and go hide into the mountains like the other sparrows do. Okay, we got to face this thing head on. And I'm glad that uh, Dave has reiterated prayer, prayer, prayer. We must be contemplatives first and then go out and act uh, but at the end of the day, as Padre Pio said, prayer is the oxygen of the soul. As it relates to the Brotherhood of Death, who can argue that this cult is implanted everywhere? Because we now have abortion on the rise, euthanasia, uh, you know, there's obviously planned division and chaos, race war propaganda being put out there, same-sex marriage, contraception, all kinds of just weird eugenic programs trying to mix human beings and animals. I mean, it's just bizarre the times that we live in. So ultimately, Dave, maybe you can evangelize here a little bit and talk to talk to everyone how about uh, chastisement ultimately is God's love and mercy and that we need this period of purification and what I just kind of call a reset button like you hit on your old Nintendo system. I mean, you just things just have to be reset. So, uh, we, you know, for all intents and purposes, we have to start over. And I'm using Pope Benedict the 16th words where he, in my opinion, knew the third secret. And he said ultimately, uh, and implied the same thing in his memoirs, that the church was basically going to have to start anew, basically. Let's just put it this way. Because the, the, the New Age religion will be the global dominant religion here soon. 
Well, there are several um, wonderful things you said, but one I wanted to stress that Sister Sasagawa wanted people to know, and that is that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. That is a very important message from Akita. Um, and so when we receive communion, we should be really thinking very seriously that we're coming before our Lord. And that's why it's important to receive communion in the mouth. That's why it's important to absolutely take the time and do an examination of conscience to be in a state of grace. And, and not believe some of the people you're going to hear saying, oh, don't worry about you know, needing to go to confession or anything like that, you know, communion is for everybody, you don't have to be a Catholic, that's all nonsense, that don't, don't, you know, look what the Catholic Church has taught for 2,000 years. The other thing I wanted to, that you prompted me to think of is look at all the movies that are coming out that show fire coming from heaven, whether it's Superman or whatever. I, I've gone to, um, at least at this point, a dozen movies where they've had seen the fire coming from heaven. I'll give you maybe one a lot of your listeners have seen. The latest Star Wars movie has this weapon that takes the energy from the sun, and it shows a scene where these fireballs are flying through the sky and they destroy a planet. Um, so they're, they're all over the place, and that, that's because the Brotherhood of Death completely owns Hollywood. The Knowing, and, too, with uh, Michael Cage. Did you see that one yet, David? The Knowing with Michael Cage, where it literally shows... You know, fire coming down from the sun and everyone's trying to get below their underground bunkers. No, I, I did not see that one. And and um, I, I won't be surprised at all, though, if you'll see an increase in the intensity of these kinds of films coming out. And, and the, the thing is, they're trying to condition, I think, the world. They know this is going to happen, basically. And they're trying to condition the world to think it's some kind of weapon or some kind of alien or whatever and not actually a cleansing from God. If you're in a state of grace, should should look at the future only with good things because what we know this is what jesus would never first of all jesus would never ask us to, to pray for something that wasn't possible and in the lord's prayer we pray for the kingdom of of god to be here on earth you know when we say on earth as it is in heaven and what we're going to see maybe not you and me Eric, but i think my children for sure um and their children we're going to we're going to see the kingdom of heaven on earth. We're going to see government leaders after this cleansing that first and foremost serve Jesus Christ. It's and it's going, to, it's going to be the most beautiful time to be alive on this planet. Okay? So people shouldn't be looking to the future with fear. That, 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 you know, will some bad things happen? You know, do, do we know, for instance, that the, uh, the Freemasons were, were able to start the French Revolution in large part because France lost the protection of God when the three kings in a row failed to consecrate the country as, as to, to Jesus' sacred heart. Yes. Do we know that that failure by the popes uh, in, our, in our lifetime has occurred? And as a result, we are on the brink of World War III and are very likely to see World War III unfold in, in the period of time after October 13, 2017. You know, it might, might be like 2018, 2019, 2020, who knows? But the point is, we are already starting to see parts of World War III unfolding before our eyes now. Uh, when the history books say it officially started because of Russia or somebody else launching some missiles or something like that, um, that, that might be 2018, who knows? But my point is, we are dangerously close to that happening. And I'm not trying to say, you know, I'm in la la land and bad things aren't going to happen. I think bad things are going to happen because not enough people are praying. Yeah, I agree with you completely on two fronts. Let's do a follow up point and I'll get your commentary on them. You, you mentioned masonry, the connection uh, with revolution, uh, France ultimately being a pivotal country that we got to keep our eye on, Russia, of course, too. But maybe you could talk to a little bit. Uh, you know, to our listening audience, who predominantly is traditional Catholics, but we have people from all walks of life listening, you know, about America and our origins. I mean, we look on the back of our dollar bill and we see all these pyramids. We see Novus Ordo Seclorum, New World Order. We have principles such as uh, religious liberty, which come from the Freemasonic sect. I, I, I mean, what are what is your everyday American to make of the United States? I mean, were, were we nefariously founded? Um are we, as some suggest, just the military arm of the New World Order, which is going into the Middle East and basically, you know, blowing certain, you know, clearing a path, so to speak, uh, for a greater Israel? I mean, give us your take on just America in general and its connection with Freemasonry. 
Well, the United States is a great country that has done many great things because it's had people devoted to Jesus Christ. And at the same time, since the very inception of this country, there's been a group of people who have had a devotion to the enemy of our God. And that's represented most visibly by the Freemason dominance in the Senate and the, and the Congress and the fact that um, all the presidents going back for some time have been a member of one of the secret societies, one of the Brotherhood of Death secret societies. So when, when you, this is all documented, by the way, in detail, by name, by secret society, and the Vigilant Christian, the New World Order book, okay? So what I, I'm saying is that there's two forces that have been in work in the United States. One a force for good, one a force for evil. The force for good sometimes has prevailed, like when the second bank of the U.S. wanted to have its charter renewed, you know, Andrew Jackson was able to prevent that. Uh, uh, another example of their failure was when Abraham Lincoln was able to prevent, um, he issued something called greenbacks instead of taking on debt from foreign, from, from Brotherhood of Death owned banks from these, uh, at the time they were known as dynastic European banking families like the Rothschilds. So, so we've seen victories at times that have produced lots of prosperity in the decades that fall, but we've also seen times where we have had great losses. And, um, you know, we talked a, a tiny bit about 9-11, and this happens to be one of the five, you know, one of the major focuses of the calling I had from God was to expose the truth on 9-11. And what makes my work there different is, unlike almost everyone you're ever going to hear who's written a book about 9-11 or who's talked on TV about it, I actually went to the Middle East to interview people who knew Osama bin Laden. And early on, I came to learn that this whole thing was nonsense. Um, and that what, what it was, was actually a spiritual ritual, a mass human sacrifice that was conducted to help bring in the Antichrist. And that they failed. It didn't, it didn't, their ritual, uh, it fundamentally failed. That's why when you talk about there needing to be another 9-11 from their perspective, absolutely. Okay, and this is a lot of information for people to put their minds around. But because of the research that I did, I came back to the U.S. and I said a lot of things that were in the Bible before that I didn't understand, I now can see them playing out in our time. And 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 I, I, I that combined with the fact that I'd already been doing the research in Japan on the atomic bomb, you know. And then all my work kind of got thrown off for a little while because I was dealing with the Ebola mess in uh, 2014. Um, but, you know, I'm at a place now where I feel that many children, even of the traditional Catholics that are listening to this, are going to be successfully deceived to reject the faith of their parents. And we are in a time where we have got to exercise extreme care because the deception is so clever. I mean, think about all the traditional wonderful Catholics that would have be, been out there saying, you know, let's go and attack Afghanistan in 2003 because of what they did to us in 2001. That's all wrong. Afghanistan has, the Afghanis had nothing to do with what happened in, in uh, 2001. It's just, it's complete nonsense. You know, they would have been a lot closer to the answer if they said, let's go after the international banking cartel or something like that. But even that would have been only a part of it. So um, what, what I want people to do first and foremost is if there's someone in your life that you have been motivated not to want to talk to, take a look at, you know, Matthew and, and, and where Jesus says, set your gifts aside, you know, before you go to the altar or go to Matthew 18 and take a look at, you know, the specific instructions of, of, of or, or just think of the Good Samaritan, okay? Think, we are supposed to love and serve one another, and Satan's being increasingly clever to get us to not want to talk to each other. And so in our own families and our own friends, very often hearts are hardened over things that I think in past times wouldn't have, wouldn't have been possible to harden the hearts as fast. And if you can... Say to someone with love, give them that first five Saturday brochure. Say, you know, I'd like to talk with you about this sometime. I care about you. I think you can produce more good fruit 
than we could by getting into, you know, like some more maybe relevant in the news issues. Like did Donald Trump say something right or did Hillary Clinton say something right? When very often, you know, um, both of them are actually saying things that are not consistent or supportive of what the traditional Catholic Church is teaching. So uh, that would be my advice is people think about ourselves, the plank that's in our own eye. Think about who we need to be friends with, reach out to that person, invite your enemy to your house for dinner, that kind of thing. And on a local basis, defeat the kingdom, defeat the brotherhood of death and the kingdom of Satan on a local basis. If you want to get involved in bigger kind of things on a global basis, I'll ask for everyone listening to this right now to say a prayer for a group of disabled people that I'm working with in Liberia. And I, they left the Catholic Church, and I'm working with them to come back to the Catholic Church. And I'm convinced that if I have enough prayers, you know, if we can get enough prayers together for this group, it's all they're going to need. And, um, and, and and just know, you know, we're not praying enough. That's that's a key message I'd like to share with you today. Yeah, we're not praying enough. We're not self-examining enough. We're spending too much time in front of the latest gadgets and gadgets and technologies. We're coming home after... A long week of work and rationalizing going out and partying and clubbing all night long instead of praying we're backwards everything's backwards i agree with you culture of self versus the culture of the sacred heart which is selfless so yes put others first there's a few more subjects i'd, I'd like to get into before i let you go once again i have here with me david d anisi from teach peace foundation talk about the role or the connection between the cult of death and its control of the mainstream narrative or mainstream media into basically brainwashing the masses to believe, you know, believing the mainstream narrative, whether it's, you know, 9-11 for us, I can only speak for myself, you know, the Holocaust and certain elements that we question. Uh, and just a lot of these events that we're seeing to that, that completely just, you know, it's a rewrite of history, basically. I mean, it's not real history. Uh, maybe talk to a little bit about that and some of your research. Well, in the, the first uh, Vigilant Christian book, I, I document how the Carnegie, Carnegie Endowment um, and the Rockefeller Foundation, how they, they got together back in 1906, and actually Rockefeller formally was formed in 1913. But the early meetings started, starting to happen with the foundation of the Carnegie Endowment. Uh, they were the two institutions that were set up to take over the U.S. educational system. And uh, they did a, a, an amazing job. They ended up creating uh, organizations for academics, um, historians, other fields. And they, they built this infrastructure up in such a way that, uh, you know, you could have a really nice life as a historian if you agreed to their terms, which was you could basically do whatever you wanted with the occasion of when they needed you to rewrite some something from a historical perspective or delete something, you know, as long as you were willing to make those kinds of, uh, you know, maybe it was only 2% of your work and, and, and the total, people just said, hey, hey, you know, this is a good good trade-off and, and they did it. Uh, what happened though is they, they needed to do it more aggressively because the wrongdoing was just so, it would be so repugnant to the American people if they found out. So they started to use the intelligence services, and uh, the CIA was formed in 1948. The CIA became the, the lead engine to rewrite history and, and publish books under anonymous names and sometimes under the names of these historians. And, and what happened, we didn't know about this, by the way. I, I didn't become an intelligence officer years later. I mean, this was, this was known in 1976 when the Church Commission revealed, if you remember the church committee, they, they revealed that there were over 2,000 books that the CIA had secretly authored to rewrite history. And a lot of Americans did this stuff because they thought somehow it was good for the country, you know, maybe they would delete sections about the black rain in Nagasaki, or they would delete sections about how people were being uh, still dying from the from the bomb, you know, a year later or whatever. Uh, by the way, there are people still dying from the bomb now. People don't realize this. You go into a shopping mall in Nagasaki, you see all these kids that look like, you know, their body parts have been reassembled by some kind of machine. It just makes you want to cry. But um, the, 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 the thing is, people often did it they suppress the truth and they change the truth very often because they were convinced 
that it was the right thing to do. They had a compartmentalized view of things. And God doesn't have a compartmentalized view of anything. And God will always say to us, it's never right to suppress the truth or change the truth for that reason. And so we now live in a time where if you're someone like you or me and you're writing the truth or speaking the truth, you're not going to be picked up by the major media. Absolutely not. And if you're a very devout Catholic, you're going to be forced out of key positions, whether it's in corporations or whether you name it. Uh, they don't want people with that kind of ethical backbone. Matter of fact, you cannot be a uh, three-star, four-star general anymore unless they have sufficient blackmailing evidence on you, which means, you know, some act of common criminality you, you knowingly participated in or some act of criminality you participated in. So we live in a world where the people in power are people that they own. And, and, and because of that, um, you're not going to hear, like very often, you were talking earlier, Eric, and it, before we started the show, you mentioned the name of a person or two, and I didn't know who they were. It's because that person's probably never been on, you know, a major media outlet, and they probably never heard of me, right? So the, the, the thing is, um, there are many, many good people out there trying to put, put together, you know, this, this truth. And you have to work hard. You have to really make an effort to go and find trusted sources of information. Uh, otherwise, you just become increasingly confused as to what's going on in the world. Yeah, and that's the one thing I ask everyone out there to pray for is to continue to pray for this apostolate. Recently, I was on uh, s some, some more relatively uh, visible channels, a Fox News syndicate called Darkness Radio up there in, in Minnesota, teaching the message of Fatima, then a Josh Tolley show. I mean you know caravan to midnight some shows that are, are are quite popular i mean so we we've made an impact to some degree but yeah ultimately we want to get the message of fatima uh out there to to the public uh you know obviously the rosary uh just the importance of praying for the consecration of russia so continue to pray for that now the last area i want to get into and i know you cover this uh as well as i listen to one of your talks okay the new world order unveiled uh through albert pike and these three world wars uh maybe we could break down this 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 paragraph that he has uh david what i find so interesting is right now we're seeing you know the race war propaganda we're seeing these satanic temples pop up right just as albert albert pike basically said that you know satanists and atheists would be pitted against christians you know oklahoma city there's one in salem massachusetts that just popped up detroit to name a few and that tells me just how close we are <laughs> to the Third World War, which may be sparked by some kind of false flag, probably in Israel. You know, who knows whether it's Iran shooting something off at them and it just, you know, it just it just really boils over. But what I find interesting in this the most, David, is how Albert Pike says those who are now disillusioned with Christianity will have no compass or direction at that point. They'll, they'll become so desolate and despair that they'll actually, uh, you know, submit to the Luciferian New Age religion now of course that's from their perspective i'm not saying de facto that happens but that's very telling i mean in order to implement this new messiah into the world just think how bad the world has to be for good catholics right now to actually submit to a new messiah that is mind-boggling and it ties in with what our lord said about shortening the, the days for the elect and you know this period of suffering that we will go through is meant for our salvation but speak a little bit more on on albert pike well, Albert Pike, um, he was um, the worldwide leader of Freemasonry back in 1884 when Pope Leo XIII issued his encyclical. And what's amazing about that is Albert Pike issued a response to that. You can read both of them on the teachpeace.com site. If you go to the library section, um, you'll, you'll see that. And, and so we have the Pope, a wonderful Pope, saying there's a secret war against Christ and his people. And the largest organization in the service of Satan is the Masonic organization. And then the head of the Freemasons acknowledging that war. It's a fascinating. Well, what makes Albert Pike fascinating on a, on a number of levels is he, um, he wrote a document calling for how to bring about this satanic rule. Um, and, 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 and it called for three world wars. And in each of the world wars, he laid out certain things that were to be accomplished. And Cardinal Rodriguez, okay, from Chile, he wrote a book in 1925 called uh, Freemasonry uh, uh, Revealed or Unmasked. 
Uh, I don't remember the exact title, but it's one of those two. But Cardinal Rodriguez, wonderful guy, he had first-hand information, and he talked about this letter that, you know, that, that he had seen that Albert Pike had written. And um, what we see now, the next major author to kind of write about that in a big way was William Blum, who wrote about this in the 50s, the 1950s. And if you look at what just the Cardinal wrote or, or William Blum wrote, it is amazingly, mind-bogglingly describing right now uh, that, that what, what World War III, how it would be set up, what would be, you know, the purpose of it, and then what was what is supposed to follow World War III, okay, which is this uh, New World Order, Luciferian Order. Um, the symbol, by the way, the I symbol for them is very important. And what's, what's very troubling, the last time I went to the Vatican, it was still there. I'm sure it's still there. But in the center of the Vatican Garden, uh, there is that this symbol representing the three world wars. It's a big gold bloodshot eye. And the, the creator of that symbol said it was representing a new world born out of it, chaos. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and so that's actually in my third book, if anybody wants to see pictures or just search online, Vatican Garden, you know, un unusual art in the middle. So what that shows you is that people at high levels are getting into the church and they're doing things, and, and other people are either afraid or they're blackmailed or they're just not aware. And as a result, you know, more and more of these abominations are, are right in front of us. But again, my key thing for everybody is this. The, the big war against Christ has already, already been won by Christ. It was won for us on the cross. All that's happening now is people have additional time to choose to have eternal life with God. And if we do what God commands us to do, follow his laws, not our heart, not what we feel is the right thing to do, uh, and, and we pray and, 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 and really turn to the Blessed Mother for her intercession and assistance, and, and, and absolutely adhere to the Catholic Church, the sacraments of communion, the sacraments of, of, of holy confession. You know, these, these things are absolutely needed for our salvation. We do these things, you know, we, we don't have to fear anything in the future. Just, just enjoy your life, you know, be uh, the hands of God, serve people that need your help. Uh, you know, do the kinds of things you're doing, Eric, speak the truth. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to live at any other time in history. I think this is absolutely the most exciting time in history. And, uh, and you know, at the same time, we've got a great responsibility to do a lot. That's absolutely true. But let's stand up and meet that responsibility and live each and every day with courage. Yeah, that's exactly what St. Therese, the little flower, said, that she, she wanted to live in the times that we live in. Uh, and so, again, that, that's another characteristic of an eagle is getting excited by the storm. I mean, we're, I, I'm excited. I'm getting ready to go into the storm. And I know Dave's providing good leadership as well. You know, very simply put, control what you can control, folks. You can't control what Francis is doing. You can't control what Vatican is doing. I would just point out that this false Masonic ecumenical program of Vatican II ultimately is leading to this formalized one world religion, which is using the war on terror and ultimately will use World War III as a backdrop to solidify humanity, a, a one world religion where, you know, Catholics look at their, their Buddhist quote unquote brothers and you're just as good as I am. I mean, that's what we're talking about. The great apostasy, ultimately embracing this mark of the beast, which the early church fathers warned would be this Luciferian initi initiation, which even uh, UN representative, I forget his actual position. If, if you know it, Dave, you can chime in, but uh, said that that's, that will be, uh, you know, the, the, the role, this, this initiation, uh, this mark of the beast that people will have to, to uh, take this counterfeit baptism or seal to ultimately get this chip in order to buy or sell because the new world order, the one world republic will be highly socialist. So that's why we see all this, you know, these weird teachings coming from the top of the church. We now have environmentalism, which ties in with uh, the return to ancient paganism. I mean, there's a lot of elements I hear uh, at play here, folks. That's why we try to do what we do at Trad Cat Night is to cause awareness so you can investigate them. David, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to give you the last few minutes to talk about any upcoming projects, upcoming talks, media appearances, you know, other information you'd like to present, and uh, we'll close it out. Oh, that's very kind of you. Well. The, the project I'm working on now is uh, we fully expect Ebola is going to return to West Africa. 
And um, there are a number of things that we can do in advance of that to help safeguard people. And because of the Ebola miracle that I, I, I experienced, um, teaching people to pray the Holy Rosary in addition to giving them the equipment so that they can have, you know, sanitation chemicals and, and be able to fight it in the physical realm. It's, it's, it's very, very important. And so it's called the Life Saving Mission. Anyone that's interested in participating in that or going to Africa with me should contact me. The, um, I'll give you one just quick story. When you're in an epidemic like that, you're not um, infectious with a bullet. You get to a temperature of 101.5. Well, in a country like Liberia, where most people don't have electricity or any, any tools like that, you can be in a village and people can be afraid to help one another. They, be, they can be afraid to even go near one another. And you introduce one non-contact digital thermometer to that village and you can check everybody's temperature in an hour, right? A village of 100 people or something, you can do it very quickly. And, and within, if it's two hours, whatever, what you, you can tell people whether or not they need to be afraid of that person being infectious. And you can implement a regime where people have their temperature checked morning, lunch, and dinner. And you can bring sanity back into a situation that's totally insane. So that's what the Life Saving Mission is about. You'll see it on the Teach Peace Fit Foundation if anybody wants to get involved in an act of kindness. And I do believe, by the way, combining acts of kindness with the truth is the way to keep your head up high as you fight uh, Satan and his forces. And I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. It was the first time you and I had ever talked, and, and uh, God bless you for everything you're doing. Well, I appreciate that, David. I look forward to getting you back on in the future. You can give us updates on all your projects. I mean, you and I, could sit, we could sit here and talk for six hours on these such subjects. So I hope everyone um, was able to get a synopsis of just several of the books that David has out there. Again, I'm going to provide all the links in the description box and also in the blog, so you don't even have to search for them. They'll be right there in front of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to send this off with three words, and it's very simple for our times. Rosary, rosary, rosary. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe and God bless.